Bunny. Yes. Let's switch gears here, if I may. So I live in the middle of uh, nowhere, Oklahoma, on a boring, unassuming street in a neighborhood with a lot of families and dogs and possibly a drug dealer or two. There's a house with a red door. Okay. Right. Do you want to paint it black? No, 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 but but I, I, I respect that reference. There's a house with a red door right by my son's uh, bus stop pickup and drop off. And at first, when the family moved in, I'm like, hey, okay, there's something sketchy going on here. I'm just going to say white power. Okay. But now I'm thinking drugs because there's a bunch of, of random people showing up and at random times and... It, and then, and, and and I said to Emerald and, and Natasha, I said, hey, you know what? I think like some shady shit's going down at that house. And they're like, no, it's not. And then literally like the next day, suddenly the entire house is surrounded by like five police officers with like tactical vests and shit. Yeah. And their weapons drawn. And before they knock on the door, before they knock on the red door, like three guys go around the house to search the perimeter. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah some shit's going down there so so on our street on our little universe on our specific street not just our neighborhood but in on our street there's not much going on there was a family across the street with a number of little redneck kids yeah and a dog and a cat and a tv that was broken and showed everything very dark pink <laughs> Yay. And they would like to have their door, they would like to have their front door open. And I used to play this game where I would try and figure out through their dark pink TV what the hell they were watching. Uh huh. And it was almost impossible when everything was like a dark pink to know what the hell they were watching. On weekends, the dads would go to the empty field next to the next to their house and teach their teach the little kids archery. Okay. And then three or four dirty pickup trucks would materialize and Bud Lights, and they drink and barbecue. So what I'm trying to say is, we weren't BFFs with that family. Yeah. <laughs> Shocker of the century. They recently moved, so okay, you guys are gone. Bye, Felicia. So now. Right next to their house is a tiny little empty field, and then an, an abandoned house. And right next to our house is another abandoned house, technically. See, a month or two ago, the house next to us was rented out, and we were told that people were going to be moving in immediately. So, and so for days after, we were told that people would arrive, and two cars would show up, and two cars and a truck would show up, and they'd go through the house, and they're checking it out, and, and people were arriving, and people were walking the property, and people cleaned out the, the old house, and it looked like things were moving forward, and oh, I'm, I'm excited. I wonder what these neighbors are going to be like. Then, nothing. Okay. People stopped showing up, or people stopped cleaning, and no one moved in. Why? I have no idea, but I do have a working theory. All right, let's hear that. See, on the side of the house, on the side of the house, and I'm looking at it right now, on the side of the house, uh, there is, uh, the house has a roof, and then... The house has walls, but in between the roof and the walls, there's a number of holes. Okay. Between the roof and the walls on the side of that house. Now, those holes are near large branches of trees, and those trees lead to a number of big, tall trees between our two houses. Bunny, trees uh -huh. that are in between our two houses and said trees are wildly populated with a rogues gallery of squirrels okay oh so many squirrels bunny and they'll go from tree to tree from house to house and, and there's a number of uh, you know and, and while it's a real squirrel mecca our house yeah squirrels will be going from from the house from the roof across uh, from the roof next door to the trees jumping from tree to tree they'll go on our fence and they'll be playing on our fence they'll go on our roof and we can hear them skittering and then we have a number of trees on the other side of the house so they go and they hang out on those trees and so 
a real squirrel mecca. When my wife was preggers and lying in bed, she could hear him on the roof skittering, uh, you know, always running off to some important squirrel meeting. Yes. There, every squirrel is always late for an important meeting somewhere. Like they all have little watches, you know? <laughs> oh, what time is it? Oh, it's 10 to 6. Oh, shit, I'm late to get nuts. And sometimes, sometimes if you're really lucky, you'll look out the window to our house and you'll see one or two or three squirrels on the fence, right on our, on our, the fence to our property. I'm assuming either fighting or acting out scenes from a movie. I would go with acting out scenes I, from a movie. Cause, cause sometimes it's like they're either fighting or they're they're doing the uh, "I want you to hit me as hard as you can" <laughs> scene from Fight Club or something like that. So, so it's a bit unclear. So my theory is is that people cannot move in next door to us. Why? Because the house is already secretly populated by like two thousand fucking squirrels. Uh huh. Because of the holes between the ceiling and the roof. You see the squirrels going in and out of there all the time. Yeah. I think that families tried to clean out that house, but they couldn't because there was already a massive squirrel army. There's an army of squirrels in there, Bunny. Yes. Very scared about the squirrel army. Natasha Natasha thinks that it's... Just don't touch their nuts and you'll be fine. Natasha thinks that it's like a it's it's like a bird army, but I'm pretty sure it's the squirrels. Yeah. Why why but is she now, leaning for birds? Yeah. I, I I but but that's not the strangest part. That's not the strangest part. The house that that's full of squirrels. That's not the strangest part. So the Midwest has a lot of churches. Uh, so I have heard. It's almost like there's 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 one church for every 30 houses. Yeah, I have three. Ha- I have three churches that are just a, a stone's throw away from our house. They're everywhere. They are legitimately everywhere. My kids used to catch the bus right outside of Black Space Jesus Church. Black Space Jesus Church. Yeah, Black Space Jesus Church. It's it, it's also a stone's throw away, and that church is like a like a black church, and. Uh, they had this big sign, this big almost billboard size sign in front, right on top of the doors to the front of their church, and it's this giant picture. It almost looks like like a like it was airbrushed at the mall in nineteen ninety nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, or maybe it's the sort of thing that someone would paint on the side of a van. Yes, I got the idea. But it's yeah. a black, yeah. But it's a black Jesus, a giant black Jesus in space, crying while laying his head on the planet Earth. So it was black Jesus in space, crying on the planet. Okay. Yeah, it was Black Space Jesus Church. I don't even know the name of the church. It was just Black Space Jesus Church. (laughs) <laughs> so that's where my kids used to catch the bus. Now the kids' bus stop are both near the Mystery Church. The Mystery Church. So there's only three houses or, or three structures on our side of this street. So it's we don't live in a packed neighborhood. So on our street corner, on one of our street corners, there's a big empty field. Then there's our house. Then there's the empty squirrel house, and then there's a church down that way. It's a mystery, though. When we first moved in, it was empty, it was beaten up, it was run down, it was basically an abandoned church. And that in and of itself is odd. Yeah. Because this is Oklahoma, there are no empty churches. Every church is taken, you know? Yeah. But there's apparently one empty church, and it's right on our street. It's a big, white, run-down, two-story church. It looks more like a barn that someone converted. Well, that could happen. Yeah. But it looked like it hadn't seen praise and worship in a long-ass time. Well, (laughs) about a year ago, someone bought it. And now there's a sign for a while people were showing up and they were working. 
yeah. on this on the mystery church. And then eventually, a few months ago, they maybe like six months ago, they put up a sign for the supposed church. It's it, the sign says that the church is called Revelations of Grace Through Faith Ministries. First off, that sounds fake. Yeah. You're not the first church of God. You're the revelations of grace through faith ministries. That sounds like the fake church I make up for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but here's the thing. On Sunday, like four or five cars will show up for service, and that's it. But, but when they're having service, no sound. No songs. No really? praise. There's nothing. And here's the craziest part. A few weeks ago, the windows were open. I, 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 the windows are always like closed and there are dark curtains and you can't see inside. But this one day, you know, I'm walking. I, I'm driving somewhere probably to pick up somebody. I, I drive past the quote unquote revelations of grace through faith ministries church and the windows were finally open and I finally get to look inside of the church no pews no chairs no tables nothing it's still empty inside it's an empty church oh okay the first floor is still fucking empty so what are they doing in there on Sunday when four or five or six cars will show up for service? What's on the second level? Are they really worshiping? Is this a church or is something sinister happening? Basically, I'm like halfway into a Jordan Peele horror movie. <laughs> You know, I'm like 60% done with the spec script for a Jordan Peele uh, socially tinted horror film. Yeah. So um, my two main ideas are as follows. Number one, it's definitely a cult and people are going to die. But number two, this is the more probable theory at the moment. Yeah. Squirrel Church. Squirrel, Squirrel Church. Church. They already own the house right next to us. Yeah. And what's next to that? The church. It's a squirrel church. Well, I would be concerned if squirrels oh, are wow. buying a property all around you. That that sounds like a yeah. scam may be coming, you know? Yeah, so I'm really worried about who is going to move into the redneck family house across the street. Yeah. You know? I'm worried that they're going to, like, Muppet Man me. They're going to Bojack Horseman me. <laughs> and, like, it's going to be, like, 12 squirrels on top of each other in a trench coat. Yeah. We're going to see them at, like, 3 a.m. getting rid of a trash bag, a human-sized trash bag covered in blood, the Burbs <laughs> style. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult phrase to say, the Burbs style. It's difficult to to separate burbs from style. You can't. It doesn't freely flow out of the tongue. The burb style. No. Like, like what the fuck did I just say? Confusing. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's my rant. You guys got to watch out for these squirrels because they're plotting something. Okay. It, they're it's... plotting something, and I'm this close to figuring it out. I am this close. I'm so close to figuring it out. It sounds it. You got me convinced. I know it's a. Yeah, I know what they're doing. I'm just not sure why and how I can stop it. Mm -hmm. Or if I want to stop it, just to be to be honest. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to die in a hideous apocalypse, uh, squirrel, squirrel, uh, apoc squirrel, op op squirrel, op apocalypse, squirrel apocalypse. Okay. Isn't a bad way to go. That took me a while to figure out how to say that. That was difficult. Okay. Squirrel apocalypse. Uh, I, I kept I wanting would, to be. I would be good with the world ending in a completely ridiculous way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down with that too. I mean, if we're if we're all going to die, let's let's do it a fun way. 
I I was always you know? really hoping that the apocalypse would be uh, a giant bowl of jello with little tiny mushrooms, uh, uh, marshmallows. Yeah. That came just rolling through town and killed everybody in sight. That's a good way to go. That is a good way to go. Because that would to just have fair, me. That would just have me standing there. As my death is approaching me, just being like, you know, I never expected this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now this, I did not expect. 